as his wife. <laughs> The biggest star of the biggest film industry in the world is someone you've probably never heard of. Film stars are adored in India in a way that they haven't been in the West since the great days of Hollywood. The people of India are film crazy. At least one new film is released here every day. And the stars are so well known that they don't need their names on the posters. It's 10 o'clock on a sticky summer morning, and the biggest star of all should be arriving at this studio in Bombay. Bombay is the headquarters of the Hindi-speaking part of the industry. The superstar's name is Rajesh Khanna. He has the charisma of Rudolf Valentino, the arrogance of Napoleon, and he's late. There's nothing the director can do about it. He rewrites yet again the lines that his star should be speaking by now and sweats and waits. Everyone is sweating and getting ready and waiting. We are waiting for our hero. And one very big problem is that our main stars they work in many films simultaneously in about say 10, 12 films together. So you're, you're waiting for Rajesh yes, and I'm waiting for my hero for the time being. Twelve o'clock has come, but Rajesh Khanna hasn't. He's two hours late. The game of waiting for Rajesh goes on. <laughs> What will you say to him when he arrives? Well, he will come himself and explain to me why he was late. And you will accept what he says? Uh, well, I'll, I might... That depends on what, what explanation he gives. But this must be costing you and the producer a lot of money this time, just waste. This is, fortunately, the lever is very cheap here in India. But I feel a little upset. No doubt I feel a little upset because if I don't get my artist in time. And I make it a precondition before I start my films that either you leave the film or you come in time. The concept of punctuality hardly exists in India, but Rajesh's lateness has style. On the Bombay coast, where the palms are stirred by the breeze off the Arabian Sea, the star lives in an impregnable dream house. Getting in to interview Rajesh is like trying to gain access to royalty. Only if a king says, come to my palace at three, he probably means it. If Rajesh says it, he probably doesn't. Ah, good afternoon. Come to see Rajesh Kammer. Oh, yeah. Is he here? No. He's not here? Yeah. We, uh, but we have an appointment with him for you the three o'clock, which is now. Ah, I don't know what time he's coming. You come to tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yes. You come. Do, do you know where he is? Where is he gone? Hospital. I don't know which hospital. Gone to a hospital? Yes. When did he go? 
His friend is sick. To see a sick friend? Yes. He's going to be at the hospital yes. for some yes. 13 hours. Yes. Uh, but he was expecting us. Yeah. But he went. Mm. I see. Right. So we must come back at 10 o'clock yes. tomorrow. Thank you very much. Next time we get as far as the gatehouse. Inside, the star has furnished it as a temple to himself. We read magazines about him, wait for another appointment that he doesn't keep, and study his film awards. We arrange another time to see him, sunset next day. But it's the same story. Sunset arrives, but Rajesh doesn't. For five days, this humbling experience of waiting for Rajesh goes on. Will he or won't he? Then, suddenly, he does. He invites us to a party, and in his sitting room by the rockery, gives us an audience. How do you like stardom now you've got it? Who doesn't? Established to feel popular. And then... Was a star, and I think a star best twinkle. You have to work very hard, though, don't you? I mean, you work on a lot of films at one time, and rush from one place to another. Two films a day. Two films a day. Never more. <laughs> uh, is that that must be fairly exacting, though? It is, but I like it. Do, do you have to? to stay at the top. I mean, th th there's more to staying a star than just acting, isn't there? Mm hmm. Part of it, yes. It has to be a little cruel. Cruel, yes. Can you give me an example of that? As you just said, that one has to fight and fight well and win the battle. That calls for a lot of things. Do you, do you plan your strategies alone? I do most of the things intuitionally, impulsive. Just wait. And things do happen the way I want them to. Two days later, Rajesh has one of his impulses. Out of the blue, he announces that he's getting married and plunges Bombay into the gaudy paraphernalia of a film wedding. India is stunned, we are told. Women are sobbing and tearing their hair. There will probably be suicide. The sudden bride is a starlet. She's the daughter of an industrialist. Her name is Dimple, and she's said to be only 15. Even the gossip columnists have been taken by surprise. Except one. This is Devi, the vitriolic queen of the gossip writers. She floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. When Rajesh decided to get married, Devi was the first person he told. He told her that he'd found the girl drowning in the sea, rescued her, and fallen in love. And I think he was high, because when he rang me up at 3 a.m., he sounded absolutely drunk. And with seven pegs at one party and seven at another, I mean, he just don't walk into the sea like he said he did. And when he told me the story, he, there was no story of the waves rising and the bride being washed away or anything. But later on by evening, he told me this. So I said, this is not what you told me in the morning. Happiness on a Hindi screen is the holy grail of the Bombay film producers like J. Omprakesh. At home in his private shrine, he prays for success and finds it so often that his undeclared profits have become an embarrassment. When the tax authorities raided his home recently, they found bundles of banknotes stuffed up the goddess Parvati. But Mr. Omprakesh is a happy family man. Every film he touches turns to gold, and he's just beginning a blockbuster with Rajesh Khanna. The ingredients will be sex, violence, love, hate, happiness, and above all, music. The music is so important that it's already been recorded even before a foot of the film has been shot.
Indian film music is an exuberant cocktail of East and West. It romps through the record shops and hopefully into the charts before the films are released. The playback singer puts on the words that will be mimed by an actress later when the film unit goes on location. For the love scenes, they'll go up to the foothills of the Himalayas in Kashmir to a luxury hotel that used to be a Maharaja's palace. Under a plump chinar tree, Rajesh relaxes, chewing pan. It's a combination of nuts and spices said to be aphrodisiac. The blend that Rajesh uses is known as a bed smasher, a suitable chew for a man with a reputation to keep up. When you're acting, what expressions do you use to, to attract the women? <laughs> that, for a start. Uh, the slide. Uh, I don't know. I think so. And you're, you're famous for this look in your eyes. How do you do it? What is it? Uh, the one, uh, you mean when singing songs? And mm -hmm. it's something like... Something. Yeah. And it works. I think that's what they like. Rajesh takes the child of a friend with him when he drives out to the location. His new wife is back in Bombay. The child is company and it's good for the public image. Life in Kashmir has an almost medieval simplicity, but when the Bombay dream machine trundles in, everyone turns out to watch. There's been no publicity, but the words got around. Rajesh Kanna's filming here. <laughs> The leading lady is Mumtaz. She's noted for her pout, and when Mumtaz pouts, she knows exactly what she's doing. She commands 30,000 pounds a film, and she does six films a year. Producer director Omprakesh is in charge, and already they're having trouble with the crowd who want to watch, and with the others who just go about their normal business right in the middle of the shot. A scene that is meant to be a touching reunion is shot under cup final conditions and spoiled. The crowd jostles. There are said to be 60,000 Indian troops in Kashmir and most of them seem to be here today. The film unit battles on, and all around the almond trees are ripe with musing spectators, and Kashmir is carrying on. Do you like working with crowds like this? I love it. Do you ever miss peace? I mean, you, you don't get much, do you? No, we don't, but we love this at the same time. It's good for business. It's good for business. No, you get different faces to see, different people, noise, people climbing up the trees. What do you think of all this? Well, that shows how famous we are. When you come out on location, you seem to have to work in a constant brawl, terrific crowds all the time. Well, in location shooting, we have got to be accustomed to it because, you know, you cannot fight the inquisitiveness of the people when their favorite stars come. The students, you know, they leave their colleges, the shopkeepers close their shops, they all come and run. Sometimes it becomes difficult for us to manage and very often, you know, I have packed up from the locations and gone home. <laughs> 
There are more hold-ups. Hold-ups because of the crowds. Hold-ups because Rajesh spends two hours changing back at his hotel. Hold-ups because the music hasn't arrived. And music is the vital ingredient, as Mr. Omprakash knows. Look at the Indian culture. Music is in the veins. A child is born in this country, he is welcomed with music. The name ceremony is given with music. His hair are cut for the first time, songs are sung. You see, the child grows, gets married, on the marriage, it is the music which plays the most important role. And so much so, when the daughter is sent away by the parents you know, with tearful eyes and all sobbing is going on, but there is a music at the background. When they recorded the music for this film, they put a garland on the microphone for good luck and left it all to Lata Mangeshka. She's the top playback singer. Her voice is as famous as the faces of the stars who mouth her words. Lata Mangeshka has been the voice of them all at one time or another. This time it's Mumtaz miming to Lata's record of a song about dawning love. When you see yourself, when you see it played back with somebody else's voice coming out of your mouth, what do you think? It is a bit, bit oh, don't you think it is a bit silly, but I can't help it. What does the audience think about it, what do you think? I've got no idea. I think now no, they are also used to it. Well, I think they know. Devi has flown in to listen for the whispers that she'll turn into shouts in her column and to cut the stars down to size. Rajesh and I, we knew each other when I wasn't a bitchy columnist and, you know, when he wasn't a superstar. As usual, like with all celebrities, he was a much nicer person to know then. I think all celebrities become bored. You know, they, they get so involved in themselves. And a star is such a self-centered creature that no woman or no, no man, no person with sort of pride or self-respect or things can like them for long. They have nothing to offer. And I feel he has nothing to offer. His box office record says that his public thinks otherwise. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? I did it very much. It's better than uh, running around trees. It's like running around rocks. It makes a change. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I liked it. I liked this part. This bit of it again and again. You don't mind going through it again and again? Not at all. This was interesting. Especially this last shot which you were seeing. Did you get exactly what you and the director wanted in the end? Uh, much more than that. You know, it's the correct beat. Once we get the correct beat and the action is executed on the correct beat, you know, there's always an appreciation. People say, Psh. When you're doing this business of miming to somebody else's singing, do you sing yourself at all or do you just move your mouth? No, I sing. You do? I sing with the playback. Uh -huh. yes. Does it work out well in the finished result usually? Does it look as though it's you, do you think? Because this is one of uh, those uh, playback singers. I mean, uh, 
you hear the playback singer and you feel that it is me who is singing. More or less because there is a lot of similarity in his voice and my voice. The only thing is he can sing, I can't. <laughs> Does it have any effect on the audience, you think, that they know that it's not their star singing with somebody no. else? No. It's accepted? Absolutely accepted. Fine. Shall we have some lunch? Good idea. Back in Bombay with her pen freshly filled with venom from the Kashmir location, Devi is writing a column about Mumtaz. Mumtaz looked limp, listless, her face pinched, tongue white and dry. I'm suffering from acute diarrhea, she told me. But it's just ideal for the scene, says my director, Jayom Prakash. You're looking all right, I told her. You look nice when you're provoked. Otherwise, how do I look, she said. You look a bore, I told her. Then Devi writes something that's going to get her into trouble. Off screen, one never heard of Muntaz's background. A father one has never heard of. We have constantly heard of Naz, Muntaz's mother, mostly from elderly men. Devi has written a piece about you and, and you're actually taking action against her, aren't you? Yeah, I did because I was tolerating from many years and I think it's too much now. So I thought about it, I said, let's do something, some thrill. <laughs> Did what she wrote about you hurt you or annoy yeah, you? I was very hurt. It's very really wrong. Well, they think their business. They just want to sell magazine. Does it frighten you that you're going to court over it? Frighten me? Yeah. Frighten me what? That you're going to court over what somebody said about frighten you. Frighten her. She should be frightened, not me. Mumtaz glides over the lake where we've taken her to get away from the crowds who mob her wherever she goes. She's been at the top for five years now, but she has few illusions about staying there much longer. Your life is very short, to be very frank in this line. You've got very limited life. Till you are top, everything will come and everybody will follow you. They want to take your autograph and Mumtaz, Mumtaz, Mumtaz. And one fine morning you get up, you feel, you're nowhere, you know, something like that. Because they all love me, I think that is one of the reasons I am on the top. All stars must fear the moment when they may fall from the top and suddenly Rajesh is facing it. In Bombay, the biggest hall in Asia is being prepared for the film awards and Rajesh hasn't won. It's the Oscar of India, and the man who's dared not to give it to him is Mr. Karanja, editor of the leading film magazine. What sort of threats have people made to you because your panel has not given Rajesh the first award? Well, they say we'll stop buying film fair. Then somebody said you're not fit to be editor of this magazine. Then uh, somebody else has said that your judges are all from books, they don't know. In the Rajesh camp, they launch a counter-attack. One of his friends is set to work to invite everyone who matters to a rival occasion. The word goes out to boycott the Filmfare Awards. Let's look at it from Rajesh's point of view tonight. He wanted the award badly. He expected it all. I don't know why, but he did. So this party that he's having tonight can be seen as a gesture of peak? Yes, sort of. Otherwise, why should he have a party tonight? What has happened is that one of his uh, employees has organized a dinner tonight. Uh, that's at about 10 o'clock. But Mr. Rajesh Khanna has promised us that he'll first come to our function and then go to the dinner. But even if he does not, the function has to go on. Uh, if, if Rajesh has his cocktail party, or has the cocktail party which is being given for him by his friend, huh. Let's and put it that way. How many top people in the film industry has he got to pull there to have a, to have had a palpable success, would you say? About say about five stars is enough. Five top stars, three ladies and two males. 
Do you think he'll pull it off? I don't think so because recently he's had too many parties, you know, his wedding and his engagement and, uh, you know, people entertaining the couple and he has made too many appearances. So, the other stars are pretty bored and exhausted seeing Mr. and Mrs. Khanna everywhere, you know, here, there and everywhere. But the star who's won the Oscar for the last two years is fighting strongly. By afternoon, the film world is hot with rumour. Will he go to both parties? Hello. Will he go to either? Now I heard this morning that his shooting has been cancelled, that he's not well. Now under the circumstances we can't really expect him to come. Is he really not well or is it a diplomatic illness, do you think? I feel first it was diplomatic illness but now he's really not well with the worries and tensions of this political yes. now, after, after all, it gives him another option, which is not to go to either or both, doesn't I it? I think he'll not go to either. <laughs> Then he just remains ill and gets some sympathy for his illness, his stomach ache or whatever it is. Shouting in his tent? Yes, so. No, they'll believe that he's ill, you know. People believe a lot of things about Probably him. Believe. I wouldn't believe that he's ill. Because I know him pretty well. He's so insecure. So complex. What will you write in your column if he doesn't go to either? Believing as you do that he's not ill, so he should go to at least one. Well, I would write the truth. Make it as bitchy as possible. Ten o'clock, the Minister of Defence arrives at the biggest hall in Asia to preside over the awards. The government takes the film industry seriously. Films are a big export. And in the crystal suite of the Taj Mahal Hotel on the other side of town, Rajesh's his faithful gather for the rival party. rumours flying about that Rajesh will come and that he won't come, what do you think? I think he definitely has to come. He has to come. Is it all going to happen, right? Yeah, I think so. But you know, even the host doesn't know whether he's coming or not. Over at the Oscar Awards, there's an impressive attendance of stars. He's coming. I just found out from his maternal uncle. That's the pilot for... His maternal uncle? Yes. What kind of entrance will he make? And he'll blink into the flash bulb, you know, looking dazed, sort of, and she'll do this and keep on looking into his eyes, you know. Was that a successful gesture, would you say? It was a coincidence. A coincidence? Yeah. It's not planned. And I think I feel very nice. And they missed me. Sorry? The function last night. Yeah. They did miss me. They did miss you. Yeah. I mean, inevitably they must have, because you are you are a very big draw. But is there any way that you can tell that they did? Mm hmm. Didn't you read the papers today? It sounds good, but the people who pay to see his films know better. They've been staying away, and Rajesh's box office returns have slumped alarmingly. His new film is Dog, and it premieres tomorrow. Perhaps that can pull him out of the dive. Everyone is suddenly aware that the star is in trouble. He has had uh, five, five flops in a row and he's not used to it because, you know, he had so many successful films and he, so he never thought it could happen to him, you know, the superstar. I mean, he used to tell stories of this one going down and that one going down. He never thought it would happen to him. Five yeah. flops in a row? Five flops in a row. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Yes, it's very bad. And the thing with him is he can't take it. He'll keep telling you, now I'm a journalist. I've got the services, the box office records of every theater all over the country. I know what is running where. And, uh, but he'll keep saying that, you know, it's doing well in Baroda or it's doing well in some other place. Now, you know, when a person living in Bombay says that a film is doing well in Delhi or Calcutta, that means it's flopped everywhere. The last four films, probably they weren't good films. Do it.
So I had no choice left. I wanted to have different roles, different characters playing. And because after the superstar thing, it's obviously when one falls a little. Before one falls, one feels that how deep is going to be the fall if one is scared. Now he's not the sort of man to take five flops in a row lying down. What's he been doing about it? He visited some temples and some shrines and some mysterious sadhus and they are very superstitious of Hindu people. They believe that you know one, one visit to a temple or something can change their destiny and make them super duper all over again. But on a practical level, Rajesh pins his hopes on his new film. On the evening of the premiere, the usual crowd waits at Rajesh's gate. The suit, specially made for the occasion, arrives, and upstairs, the star's new wife prepares to play her part in the most crucial premiere of her husband's career. There are 20 people on Rajesh's domestic staff, and tonight, most of them are employed in getting the couple ready. Do you like having your hair done up as an advertisement? My God, I hate it. I have to do it, you see. These premieres and all. You don't have your hair done, you know? They if you went along hot. with it, free like, say, Bardo might, you'd be in trouble, would you? Not in trouble, exactly, but they expect this out of me. See, they always think of me as a woman with a big hairdo and all diamonds and... <laughs> Are you looking forward to it tonight? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Very important. Very, very important. She knows which diamonds to wear. These have been specially made for tonight. But choosing her sari is more difficult. She, I don't know. Two sari she to got. Which one she yes. should wear? She can't make up her mind. Which one should I wear, Jenny? What do you suggest? I totally agree. I like the red one. The red green. one? The green, the green. <laughs> <laughs> How many saris have you got? Will this make Rajesh super duper again? That depends on the whim of the great mass audience of India. And now that his stardom is faltering, Rajesh will be wondering more and more what that audience wants. His rival, Shashi Kapoor, has had time to think about that. He's still near the top now, as he was ten years back. But five years ago, he went through a bad patch when his film didn't seem to provide what the audience wanted. The people who crowd round his Mercedes are not like a Western audience in any position to enjoy social realism and introspection. What they need in their cinema is escape. The average Indian is not rich. He can go to see a film which is very cheap. And this is the cheapest form of entertainment. And he sees it for one. Not even five new pens. Yeah, that's what I think. Five or ten new pens. And it's marvelous when he goes there. Now he has no education. He has no background, which he should actually. Right now, the present Indian. And when he goes there, he's tired, he's worried, he's had lots of problems. And he's been brainwashed into sort of uh, living the life he's, he knows he's going to live for the rest of his life. Because uh, there's hardly any future for the poor. And so when he goes to see this film, he sits there in the cinema and he expects fantasies. He expects fantastic things. Laughter, humor emotions, sentiments, music, love, romance, you know, grandeur, you know, lots of things. He doesn't want to be told about the realities of life. Across the baking plain, Rajesh's new film is coming to a village. The government film waller comes for a rare one-night show where the big film will follow one on family planning.
the town crier goes round with the news. If they don't like Rajesh's film, tonight will be the only time they'll see it. If they quite like it, they'll spend two days' earnings to go and see it again, 16 miles away in the nearest big town. If they really like it, they'll go six times or more and run. Evening comes, they begin to move in from the fields and from neighbouring villages to see Rajesh Khanna's new picture. Their judgement on it will filter back to him to tell him if he's still their star or if they've made him a has-been. Mm-hmm. Hey. Go on. Come on, <laughs> By the end of the film, the village has made up its mind. It's not a bad film, but it's not one they'll go to see six times. And all across the country, people in other villages and towns seem to have been reaching the same conclusion. In Bombay, the message is clear. The superstar may not be quite so super anymore.